Well hello guys, welcome to something a little bit different on the channel. This is Alpha Polaris, a point and click adventure, um, which is available at the moment from Steam, free of charge. Um, really interesting looking game conceptually. Uh, reminds me an awful lot of The Thing, which uh, if you haven't seen is a sort of psychological um, well, not really psychological. It does work. Does have a lot of psychological, um, which is, well, it's basically a psychological horror film in the um, set in the Arctic, which is what I was trying to say. I make a lot of sense, don't I? Um, which is exactly what this is, um, with some Lovecraftian elements, and I do love the H.P. Lovecraft um, kind of ideas and, uh, and and sort of stories. So this is kind of perfectly set up for me um, and essentially it's uh, an oil drilling company's um, they, they have a research base out in the Arctic and they find something and uh, we play the Norwegian scientist biologist rune who is kind of staying there studying the uh, behavior of polar bears so here we go it's day one now hopefully i have pushed the sound up enough that you can hear what's going on hey norwegian guy are you in there Ka. there's another polar bear for you to stun we'll be friendly okay if you could come back in an hour or two. You think it'll wait while you snooze away? Rise and shine, Norway. And if you don't, I'll shoot that thing myself. You want to get that science project of yours or whatever it is done? We'll just okay, give up. okay. Right. Hold on. I'll just get my gear. I'm waiting right here. And don't let Miss Alaska hold you up back there. We'll find out who Miss Alaska is. Yeah, if you're a Norwegian, please explain what that is. It, it sounds funny. So this is this is Rune, um, and this is essentially how to play the game. Very very straightforward. It is literally just point and click. Um, but it's I think it looks it looks pretty nice. I'm I'm pretty happy with that. Um, as you can see, there's various things we can point at, or you can right click to get descriptions on certain things um, no I can't do the light uh, polar bears twilight of the polar bears the ombre and Mahoska, which is a fusion jazz band of course uh, so I have started this I did um, make an episode uh, make two episodes actually of this earlier on but I wanted to get it right, the sound was not particularly good, particularly when they were talking, so I wanted to make sure that it was right this time. I want the episodes to be a bit shorter, a bit snappier, because uh, we were like a, a one and a half hours for, for one of the episodes. So there's, no, there's not a big game, um, and I've seen, I think it's been one playthrough I've seen on, on YouTube, and it didn't get, you know, it was about seven or eight episodes to, all the way to the end. So don't expect this to be a long series, but it's something a bit different, and I'm quite excited about doing it. So, yeah, he is a um, Norwegian scientist, um, so he needs to get his polar bear gear. Of course you do, lad. Of course you do. So we'll, we'll leave the room. We'll have a little look around. So we've got um, three other people staying here, and we can go down the corridor, and we'll just go into the living room and the kitchen, and we'll meet um, Nova, who is... Tell these spotted hey, another polar bear outside. We're working there. Not now, Rune. Polaris, come in, Polaris. Go ahead, we hear you. I found oil deep down a crevasse near Test Drill 2. That's out. It's an open pit, Nova. I found seep oil. But that's... that's wonderful. And there's more to the story. I also ran into something unexpected. But I'd better tell you in person. I'll be there soon. While you wait, you can contact Thule. We need to announce this right away. What was unexpected? Should I tell them something else? Just tell them we're going to make the shareholders happy and the liberals angry pretty soon. Okay, where are you now? A few miles northeast of Polaris. But speaking of tree huggers, is that Norwegian chap still bothering you? Oh no, he's not. Not at all. What? 
I tell you, I haven't seen such an obvious crush since my prom night, and that's been a while. He's in the room, Al. Shut it. He's there? Well, I think that was all. See you soon. Over and out. So he found oil. I don't know what that last part was about, though. For some reason, he seemed to think that you have a bit of a crush on me. Crush? No, I... I just... Come on, is that how they do it in Oslo? <laughs> Whoops, I think I left the line open. And what a thoughtful mistake it was. This has been a comedy goldmine. Look, maybe Rune could fix you something nice in the canteen. Uh, let's say, tomorrow. I'll even throw in some fuel and ammo for Tully. Uh, for distraction, you know. I could do that. Good. Do I have a say in this? Not really. Can you cook, Rune? That's my girl. Rune, I happen to know what she likes, but I'll fill you in later. Now is not the time. Okay, over and out. Over and out. So, did you have anything else in mind? Tully spotted another polar bear outside. Polar bear research on a station owned by a godless oil company. You know, this might be the biggest oil discovery of our careers. While you are trying to save the Arctic. That's... A serious conflict of interest, I know. I love ice climbing and the Arctic. That's why I'm here. Did my master's measuring skua eggs in Svalbard. As for the company, me being here is just a cheap publicity trick. I'll play along and get my thesis done. But maybe I should get moving. That bear won't be around forever. Be careful. Everything Tully knows about polar bears comes from cola commercials. Right, well, there we go. So I'll just uh, take you through here. Here's the kitchen. See what's in the fridge. Oh, look, there we go. Some eggs and stuff. Um, last time, the other thing I did wrong is I put my face over here. So now we can see the bag. And this is what we've got in our inventory. So we'll leave the way we came. And we'll go and try and sort out the polar bear issue outside. So uh, through here to the uh, to the garage. So yeah, some tools over there. Um, other bits and pieces, fuel. And so we can sort of got some guns over here, including I did not press that. Stop that. Stop that, Rune. You horrible little man. So we've got a trank there. So we'll probably need that. Um, we also, in here, have the lab. Nice window. Um, so, you know, some weird sausage-looking things down there. Uh, medical cabinet. Um, and also we have our sedative gear, which is important for dealing with polar bears. I'll take that. Uh, and then we'll go out and have a look where this polar bear is. As you can see, we've, um... oh, here it is, uh, Tully. Hey, Rune, over here. This was a guy shouting through the window. Uh... Where is it? Back there, behind the station. I think it tried to stalk me, so I took off. Then it's probably a male, so let's be very careful. It's very wise. Let's go up the top. Let's see it from up there. Right, there he is. He's a big one, all right. Somewhat over 200 kilos, I'd say. And guess what? He is a she. Does that matter? More than one would think. Tracking collars can't be fitted to males. Their necks are wider than their heads. So, within our uh, uh, our bag, we have this guy, which is a, a multi-tool. And importantly, this gives you our, it has a compass, so it can do a variety of things. But we also have a notebook, and within the notebook, we have a bit of a checklist of what to do with um, polar bears, how to approach them and what to do when we sedate them. So, what we'll need to do is sedate Mr. Polar Bear, and we're gonna use that gun. 
and see if we can pick him off. That's a, I think that's a lovely little effect. It just you know the um, the echo, just good kill. What you'd it expect it right to sound like. Supposed to, just above the shoulder blade. Let's give the sedative some time to kick in and then have a closer look. So two minutes later, <laughs> at least, we'll come back and uh, we'll have a little look at our polar bear friend here. Look at that maw. It can easily crush a seal's skull. Or drag a small beluga oh, whale out. Bleeding from his mouth by the Mighty that. nasty smell. It shouldn't be that bad. Right, we'll grab the old thing. Careful! Relax. I know what I'm doing. And then we'll put the collar on. That's a satellite tracker? Yes, but it transmits only triangulation data. The collar will come off after a few weeks. After that, I'll retrieve it. Right then, so... Yeah, she's malnourished. And the other thing to note... There's the reason for the smell. The right quadrant mandibular canine is chipped. The what? A fang. The tooth is infected and the infection is spreading. Look at the dark spots on the gums. So, a sick polar bear. Not so good. Oh, right. We also want to check the polar bear's um, oxygen, blood, blood oxygen concentration according to that little uh, thing and the pulse. Uh, pulse is over 40, which is normal for a sleeping animal. That's good. Right. We're done here. Cool. She can't eat with that tooth. That's why she's so badly malnourished. We need to contact the veterinary service tomorrow. Are you going to keep her on a leash until then? Let's haul her to that old sled dog cage to wait for them. You stay here and guard her. I'll figure out a way to do it. What if she starts moving before that? I'd keep my distance. She'll be rather pissed off when she wakes up. Right, so what we need to do is to get the polar bear into the yonder cage. Um, so we'll need some rope, and there was some rope just where we came, just as we left. So we'll go and grab some of that and come back. That's the generator, the Jenny. Don't think we can get into that in a minute. And here we go. Just grab that rope. Must mean we've got, I mean, taken our coat off, put our coat back on. Dear me. We'll grab that. You'll notice all the way through this, the tumble dryer or washing machine is constantly going. Right, okay. So we'll head off this way. And so we've got a, a snow plow there. See what else is around. There's the old polar bear up the top. Right, I don't have the keys to that, so, but that snowmobile will be a, a potential way of getting this back. Right. Have you figured out how to move her? That thing will get up any minute. Right, we can suggest dragging her, maybe. Let's see what he thinks of that. We could try to drag her. No way! That thing weighs well over 500 pounds! We couldn't drag her for a foot! Other ideas? Ooh. Just a moment. I'll get back to you. No, I won't. Just a Have you figured out how to move her? That thing will get up any minute. Uh, snowmobile. 
Let's take the snowmobile and pull her. There we go. That might work. Might do. Right. Tolly's got his snowmobile. So what we'll need to do, I think, is open the cage. That'll be a start. There we go. Um, you know, I haven't done this before. I know that you're not allowed to put ropes around it because it hurts the uh, the polar bear. So I'm going to take this thing off the back of the sledge here, which is uh, I forget what that is. Ratchet strap, which I have no idea actually what that does um, in real life, but what we're going to do is use it as a bit of a sling to put around the polar bear. And then, using the rope, we're going to tie the rope to the back of there, to the pillar of the cage, and to that. And that way, we'll be able to pull the polar bear inside. Eula Petroleum is going to love her. We are not telling them. We need to do what we can to help her. I'm gonna go take a leak. Right, he's gone for a piss. So, uh, yeah, we'll carry on for a bit more. It's just 17. So, we need to go and find antibiotics for the infection. And we know there's antibiotics in the lab, but we've got to figure out how to deliver those antibiotics, because that ain't gonna be easy with a pissed off polar bear. So antibiotics are likely to be, you would think, in the medical cabinet of the uh, uh, in the lab. I I would suspect. See what we've got in here. So we do have antibiotics in there. Good. So silamycin, uh, silamycin uh, antibiotic, which is a liquid penicillin. Uh, we are going to use that. Okay. So we need to keep her in the cage for 14 days. And we need to contact Thurl in the morning. Right, so what do we have? Do we have a syringe with that? Make some room. Sample's oh. coming through. Here's Al. Rune. Al. Pretty brisk weather out there. Leave no skin exposed. What do you got there, Gramps? Early Christmas. A few hours ago, I was roaming the glacier using the crevasse radar. No magnetometrics or anything. Suddenly, the thing starts bleeping, and I hit the brakes. Went outside and found myself on the edge of the nastiest crevasse ever. Holy shit! And that's not even the hairiest part. Glanced down, and there it was. Deep in the hole, a bubbling pool of crude oil. Again, no transient electromagnetics, tellerics, or anything. Just stumbled on it. So I figured there's more to this story. Tied myself to the six-wheeler's winch and went down. You fucking went down the crevasse? Alone? And with that trunk of yours? Yes, Tully. I bloody went all the way. Let's say I had a hunch of an old oil wizard. Did some surface sampling, looked around, and found these. What's he got? Ooh. Oh. So... Unsettling, isn't it? It was a sacrificial site of some kind. That thigh bone. It's human. Yes, there were plenty of body parts down there. But I didn't want to stick my nose any deeper than I already had. What do you think, Rune? Um, I think an important this is find. This a significant find. 
The I symbols mean, must look be. like some sort of elaborate writing, but it's not really my field. I have a few paleoanthropologist contacts in Bergen. We could reach them through the Thule station. Maybe, but let's not be hasty here. The fine could mean big bucks for all of us, so let's not draw any unnecessary attention to it. Tully? Right on, Gramps. Last time I checked, we were on an oil research station, not some fancy university. Well, you told me. You are not going to believe this. Euler himself is coming here. Bob? They're sending Bob? No, much worse. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'll be in my room. What the hell was that? Alistair Euler, the son of the company founder, is coming here. So why was going to say? I've known Bob a long time, and in this case, the apple has landed far off. Oh, he sure got the ice queen ticked off. We have some mutual history together. I'm going out for a smoke. You joining, Gramps? No, thank you. I'll reward myself with a couple of sandwiches. Viking? No, thanks. I'm trying to quit. And if I'm not going to be allowed to contact a real expert, I'll examine those bones myself. Knock yourself out. Well. You do know what your oil find means for Greenland, don't you? Yes, it'll bring in money to the local people, thus giving them tools for pursuing their independence. It'll also have a severe effect on the ecology, not to mention global climate problems. What do you want me to do, Rune? I'm an old guy. For once, I found something worthwhile. Anyway, I suggest you take a look out of your window before going to sleep. There should be powerful aurora in the sky tonight. Right, well I think that is as good a place to leave episode one as any. So when we come back, we will look to dose up the polar bear with some antibiotics. And we're going to have a look at this here, um, this here parchment thing and uh, bones. I hope you enjoyed that. Where's the mystery going to take us? What is going to happen? Um, you'll have to join in next time to find out. If you did enjoy it, hit that like button. Please subscribe if you are new. And I'll see you next time for more Alpha Polaris. Goodbye.